Yo, how you guys doing? This is Joe from Cringe Technologies. Oh, I'm going into the dark again. Let's turn some light on. Light? No? Yeah, light. Okay, guys. I'm sorry, it has been a while. Maybe not for the newcomers, but people who do watch this channel, it's been a while and apologies for the delay. But as you can imagine, I always say this to you, I am manic. So the time or the opportunity to take the camera out and record is kind of difficult, but I'm trying my best to do a better job of it. Okay, cool. So Easter break, Easter half term, Easter holidays. What guess what we're doing? A project and we're working on all right so you've probably seen this school before this school's got a dedicated server which is this dell one here here we go where is it you've probably seen this bad boy ah look at that cab nice cab anyway we're basically moving from on-prem servers with active directory to have a look cloud base well microsoft 365 and you can see all these little lovely permissions and you're going to probably see the name of the school there which we're going to blur out <laughs> and blur out there as well okay i say we're moving i've actually already moved it i've actually moved the application i've moved file server from file server to sharepoint i've also created the user accounts or we did the team policies for intro id mail merge exchange so has it gone smoothly yeah, I suppose it's one of our smoothest ones. So as you can see, this is the server and we have shared folders on this one. We've got, I'll show you, there we go. All right, so you've got like, you've got C drive, which is the local drive for the, well, I say it's three drives, this is a RAID. So you've got basically four hard drives there. One, two, three, four. It's actually not a RAID 5. So what that means is if any hard drives breaks or are faulty, the server's down. So they didn't make it where it was like preventative measures. Sometimes that happens because the person is unaware how to do that. So this is why they've done it this way. But the whole purpose of a server with having so many drives in the first place is to create the, the redundancy. Like, so therefore, if one hard drive fails, it replicates the data across, you know, that's the whole point of why you would have a server. It doesn't matter now because we now move in everything from this drive here into the cloud, well, into SharePoint, which we use the SharePoint migration tool. I'll quickly show you how that looks, that one there, when it starts up. It's gonna prompt me to enter in a login, login name, which I've got there. Okay, so you see SharePoint migration. Now this app enables me to transfer folders, migrate folders from here to SharePoint site. So SharePoint site, probably show you guys what I mean. Okay, so how do we manage all the workstations? Well, like I said before, we connect them to Intunes. Now Intunes is an MDM, which is similar to Lightspeed, similar to Meraki, but Intunes is Microsoft 365 version. And you can manage a number of things through Intunes, manage a number of operating systems as well, from Android, iOS to Mac OS. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to be able to manage them via the web and that's the whole purpose of it i take the responsibility from active directory and focus more on the web-based management because you could obviously manage them from anywhere and it's just that flexibility a server's been restricted to remoting into the server and doing it by that way this is a primary school so it's quite straightforward to manage because there's not a lot of data you're talking about two terabytes worth of data so compared to obviously secondary schools or bigger organizations and then you've got like about 50 users to kind of manage as well so yeah pretty straightforward forward okay so with these workstations you have to disconnect them from the domain which i've already done and then therefore you have to then enroll them into intunes so i'm just quickly logging in i'll show you briefly how i did that and then i'll kind of show you the layout of managing intunes and what you can do on there as well it's gonna be a bit of change for the school because the staff members are going to be coming straight back into work the following week and instead of using file explorer to navigate to their shared folders or shared drives they're going to go straight into one drive teams and obviously uh, sharepoint well same concept so we try to make the process as easy as possible as smooth as possible so the sharepoint sites are basically the shared drives they're used to so we gave the same naming conventions we're going to create shortcuts from the sharepoint sites to the OneDrive, so everything is in one dashboard they open up one drive and it's there they'll see their one drive which is associated to their individual or my docs and then they'll see the quick access they'll have access to all their sharepoint drives just that's all basically Basically their share drives what they're used to in file explorer i don't really recommend the whole synchronization of one drive 
because it's rubbish and it takes long for it to sync and the synchronization never really is successful. So I encourage staff members just to use the web-based application. They can still obviously open up Microsoft Word desktop versions or Excel versions if you want to go have if they're using something or they're more familiarized with using integrated features because the web application version on Microsoft 365 is good, but it's still there's limitations to what they can offer. So they have to get basically get used to uploading and downloading basically which they it will be an additional step for them they might well might not they'll get used to it and then they'll see the benefits of obviously using these things web-based and applications web-based because then therefore they could access their work anywhere instead of remoting in rdp into everything okay cool so for example just logged into the workstation so now i'm going to join this workstation to be managed by intunes so you go into accounts and you go into access to school and work you press connect okay cool so you'll see where it says set up your work and school account so you don't sign in there you need to sign in where it says join this device to microsoft entra id and then we'll put in my credentials so it's like actually joining the domain and disconnecting the domain very very similar when you're enrolling into intunes microsoft intunes so it's now just authenticating so i'm just waiting for her to come up cool great it says make sure this is your organization it says it is got my credentials on there which is great and then press join Boom. Okay, cool. Now you can see it's all connected. This device is connected to this organization. It's straight into Intunes. Press done. Then I go into info. You'll see here some of the policies. And then when you press sync, it'll pull the remainder of the policies that I've set in Tunes. It's very much like group policy. You have user policies and you have device policies. So it's quite similar to the concept of how group policy works on Active Directory. Yeah, basically. Cool. All right, let's keep it moving. Hey guys, hope you're well. Oh gosh, another problem. What am I doing? Come to another school because I got a notification from the school's internet provider, LGFL, that they can't access their firewall. Um, so I've come here, lucky I have access to have a look to see what's going on. Now, I thought it was a power cut, because sometimes that happens. You get like a power cut, then it's obviously switches everything off, get a notification, then back up again. So I normally get email notifications anyway, if something like that happens within the school, if the firewall is undetectable. And then normally after maybe an hour or so, or even maybe quicker, and the power cut switches everything back on and then the firewall connects to LGFL host services and then notifies me that everything's back up and running. But today the firewall was, went down about two o'clock in the morning. So I left it, monitored it, went to, to the job that I should obviously do the migration where the school I was doing the migration to the cloud and realized that I didn't get a notification to say that the firewalls come back on. So I'm here, above and beyond guys, above and beyond. All right, cool. So wonderful cabinet my messy cabs. You get used to it. You get used to having messy cabs and then your brain just kind of works around it. Anyway, all right, so here we go. So you've got the router here. This is the router and you can see there's no life. So I'm hoping it's something to do with the power supply and I could swap out the power supply, swap it out, put it in, boom, comes back on again. All right, so let's test the power. All right, cool. This is the plug which goes in the back of the router, the LGFL router, I could feel it here, which is great. Now I'm just gonna follow this cable into all, whoever puts cable, you know, I hate cable ties, really do hate cable ties. I mean, I do understand why they do it, I'm not gonna lie, I do, but it just, uh, it's just a pain in the bum, you know, when you wanna get access to something and figure out where things are going. And So what this, whoever did this, this wasn't me, to be careful as well, you see little fibers, don't wanna, Pull the fiber out and then we'll really be in trouble. Got to see if this is a problem with the plug. So I'm just going to plug it into... <sighs> so the monitor's on with the cable which was behind the router. Just going to put this back. There's nothing wrong with the plug. Plug's fine. Plus, I don't have one which bends anyway. Ooh, look, I've unplugged it, plugged it back in. I heard some noises. 
I did hear a light. Hear a second, you hear that? Come on, give me some light. Okay, it's trying to start up, but it's having problems doing so. Okay, here we go. Can you hear it? Probably not, don't know if you can hear it, but it's like you can hear the fan making noises and um, trying to boot up. They must be really busy because all the schools are working. They're up and running. That's why you can't see anything on your firewall currently at the moment because the router's fault. It's, it's just not booting up. Yeah, okay. I was going to pop you and hold for a minute, sir. Okay, no worries. Okay, so what happens next? They will see on their end if they can communicate to the firewall, which clearly they can't. I wanted to give them a bit more detail so they don't tell me to try this, try that. So that's hence why I said I've tested the power supply, plugged into something else, power supply is fine. Also, that's why I um, said what the router was doing, that it was trying to boot up or trying to do something and then it, it just wasn't kickstarting. And then the next thing I indicated to them as well was that there's no lights on the router as well. So the reason why I did those processes and said that very, try to kind of cram that in is so it doesn't really waste my time on trying to do any more diagnostics. Just arrange the replacement of the router. And the next thing is really how fast we could get the replacement placement router here and how fast I could actually plug it in but again problem we have at the moment is bank holidays on on obviously a weekend now I would def tomorrow's Friday which is good Friday here in the UK I would have definitely come here and done it but they can't guarantee the what time delivery would be so would I be able to come here and for example uh, wait for delivery maybe it'll just be difficult unfortunately because like no one's on site you're probably wondering why is it taking so long? Or well, maybe not. I'm probably wondering why is it taking so long. Because I've got another place to go to as well. So, Hey guys, okay, cool. We're back again. Still continuing the cloud transfer from one place to another. Or from one, sorry, from one place to another. The cloud migration, I mean, sorry. <laughs> cool. So yeah, there has been some teething problems, unfortunately. Uh, teething problems, what they are. MFA, so... MFA, which is multi-factor authentication. It keeps on prompting users to enter that when they're on site, as in when they're on site in a school. Now, you can isolate a site to say, don't prompt in this location. So you can actually do it by location using the uh, public IP address and added it to one of the conditional access in their Microsoft tenancy. So what I mean by that is using the, finding what the public IP address of your site is. So, you know, typing in what's my IP and it'll give you the, the public IP address of your router and then therefore you assign that IP address to the conditional access in Microsoft Tennessee to say, okay, cool. Once a member of staff comes on site, when they log on, it no need to prompt to enter in to MFA. So what I mean by that is that they don't have to look for a code or get email or text to enter in a code to get authorization to log into their system. Okay, cool. So that's not working. <laughs> Uh, so there's a few staff members where it just keeps on throwing that error message. So we're back and forward with Microsoft at the moment trying to resolve that. Um, apart from that, I think that's been okay. So what we've done next week when the school comes back, when the teachers come back, is basically full on. So it's not an inset day. They're going to basically log onto the new system and try to use OneDrive and navigate through SharePoint, etc. Now, it's a bit of a transition from the staff members because they normally go through file explorer and they have obviously shared map drives there and that so for them to kind of go into the concept of web format cloud it's going to be something new for them but in the grand scheme of things the staff members should be able to adapt to that fairly well i'm fairly confident what we normally do when we do a project or migration or server installation or whatnot we have engineers on site when they all come back to make sure everything is actually smooth so I am going to be here and two other of my engineers will be obviously be on site as well to make sure that the staff members can log on okay, log on and get access to their resources, get print, connect to the interactive whiteboard, see their files, be able to teach. With the uh, migration of files from the file server to Microsoft SharePoint, what you'll find is that maybe one or two documentation might be missing. So we won't really know until they kind of log on and say. And now you're probably thinking, why didn't I make sure that all of them were migrated? Now with the Microsoft tool, it tells you 
total files within the folders, how many successful files were there, how many files transferred successfully, and how many files failed to transfer. Now, sometimes the majority of the files which are being failed to transfer, either zip files, files which maybe where the extensions, and probably old files which is not really relevant. So I'm not overly fast, so it's easier just to make sure teacher says, oh, I'm missing a file, so therefore I'm not transferring files which have never been looked at for the last 10 years. That's something which we have to we'll factor in next week as well. We've done some testing. We had a member of staff come in and this is when we knew it's a, no, it's just a problem about the MFA. So yeah, so in the grand scheme of things, we're fairly kind of happy. Cool. So what we'll do is just keep on moving and we'll see you on the next one.